All right, welcome back, everybody. If you're a parent of teenagers, you know a lot of arguments can happen in your child's bedroom. It's keeping it clean, mm -hmm. turning down the music, things like privacy. That's right. But our next guest says there are at least 20 dangerous signs in a teen's room, all red flags that can signal drug or alcohol use. And here with a wake-up call for every parent that you need to hear is Tyler Leibert and Katie Morrow with an organization called Your Choice to Live. Thanks for being here, you guys. Thanks, Thanks. for having us. Yeah, important conversation that we're about to have because I think most parents, and maybe you can even speak to how your parents felt as well, but I think most parents want to believe my child would never be abusing drugs or alcohol. Maybe they've dabbled, maybe, you know, their friends do, but they're not going to. Is that a sentiment you hear from a lot of parents and, and one of the reasons that you really feel it important to speak to parents? We hear that a lot from, you know, from parents, from teachers, from everybody, because who really wants to believe that their kid's going down the wrong path? Yeah. And we have a saying in your choice, you know, you, we have a tendency to deny things that disturb us and that, you know, that defines everything right there. Nobody wants to believe it. Nobody wants to think it's their kid. Nobody wants their kids to go down that path. So we're going to deny things. Um, to kind of escape reality and not want to believe that they're going down that path. I love that both of you are speaking out about this. I give you both a lot of credit. Very impressive. And I met your parents, I think, before who are on the show. I think you met my mom. I met Maybe your not my mom. Dad. Um, can you just break it down for us a little bit? First, do you mind sharing how old you are? I'm 29. You're 29. How old are you, Katie? I'm 33. You're 33. Mm -hmm. When, Tyler, did your drug use begin? Oh, 11 years old. You were 11. And mm -hmm. how old were you, Katie? About 14. Tell me just how it started because both of you used heroin. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of parents are watching and going, what? I mean, my kid's never going to use heroin. But at 11 and 14, you don't just start using heroin. H how does it start, so to speak? How does it graduate to that? So for me, um, and this, this is typical with a lot of people that I have run across, um, generally you start drinking and then you start smoking pot and then pills are next and then pills are what ultimately lead, lead, ultimately lead into heroin. Why, pill, why do pills lead to that? Because if you don't know, Oxycontin and heroin are pretty much identical. Okay. They're the same thing. Okay. Huh. Um, so. Did you know that? No, I I've never either. heard that before. Yeah. So people that, you know. And Oxycontin for people who know is, is a painkiller. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so people that start going down pills, you know, eventually it becomes too expensive. So you just switch to heroin because it's cheaper. And, and easy that, to find? Yeah. Easy to find. Yeah. How about for you, Katie? It was a little different for me, so I started with marijuana and cigarettes, and then I didn't actually start drinking until much later. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just kind of a natural progression. And when I talk to the students, I just say, you know, at that point, drugs were so entrenched in my life that when I was offered heroin, I just naturally moved on to it. Okay, mm -hmm. just two really other quick things. Why did you use drug? Is it to escape pain, what we normally think of? And how did your parents first discover that you were using drugs? For me, I did it just to fit in. That's why I started everything. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I didn't have many friends when I was in, you know, grade school, so uh, I, I, that, I, I looked for friends. I looked for companionship, so I did anything I could to fit in with those groups of people. And um, my parents knew I was in trouble. They knew I was being a bad kid, but they were like every other parent. They didn't want to believe I was that worst kid, so they were like, well, this is just a phase. He'll get through it, and then I never and got And did you lie it. a lot, too? Oh, yeah, absolutely. All the time? Yeah. How about you, Katie? Um, yeah, same kind of thing. For me, I was mostly rebellious, so I started to rebel and that I was defiant and I was going to do what I was going to do. And um, my mom knew that there was absolutely a problem, but she didn't know how to help because I was kind of sneaking under the radar at that point. And she was just at a loss for resources and things to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think so many parents just don't understand the culture and they, you know, maybe especially if they didn't get involved in drugs themselves, which I imagine most didn't, they, they just don't get it. So let's talk about this event that's going on, this bedroom that's going to be set up, and, and signs that parents or grandparents can look for in a teen's room that signal a red, red flag for drug or alcohol abuse. Well, we set up this entire bedroom, and half is girls, half is boys, so we can you know split the duality. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's somewhere around 50 signs, 50 you know hidden signs in this bedroom that would, you know, that n nobody would see. You know, like what? Give us some examples. Well, for example, like there's a monster can that looks normal. Oh, like feels energy normal. drink. Yeah. Okay. Looks normal, feels normal, but when you, you, you know, you can pick it up and you wouldn't suspect anything, but then you open up the top and it's actually a canister. Oh. Of what? 
just a canister. You can put drugs in there. You can put whatever you okay. want to in there. Okay. Huh. Um, and then other subtle things like, you know, the corners of plastic bags or tin foil or, you know, there's where to hide things in pillowcases and posters and stuff like that. So it's an mm. entire room that parents, teachers, anybody can walk through and they'll, you know, make their mental list of what they think it is and then we'll go through everything with them and the, the shock on people's faces is just, wow, I didn't know, you know, I had no idea that could be there. Now, are these, you know, you say, okay, these are places you can hide it. Are these made up places or are these places you've heard from teens that they use to hide, that these are typical spots and things that people typically do? Or how did you choose these red flags? Half of them were from what we hear from, you know, students that we talk to and stuff like that. But then the other half, we've lived it. We've been yeah. there. So, so you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This room is for um, 21 and older Correct. only can tour. You give a public tour for this room. It's a yep. staged room. Mm -hmm. And this is truly an education educational tour yes. uh, and, and, and tool to teach parents. It's with your choice to live. It's a wake up call exhibit. It's a room set up half female, half male with up to 50 signs of where your child could be hiding signs of drug or alcohol abuse. The public tours are April 14th to 23rd. The phone number to learn more is 262-367-9901 or yourchoice-live.org to learn more and about where those is red it? flags. Where, you're, are you traveling with this room? Nope, it's right in Heartland. It's in it's Heartland. It's in Heartland. Yep. Okay, and people can find out more about going to your website. Really quick, how long have you been clean, Tyler? Over seven years. Seven years. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. And Thank how you about Katie? you, Katie? Nine years. That is awesome. Thanks. Give you guys a lot of credit. Thank really you. nice yeah. to meet Thanks you. Thanks for doing mm -hmm. what you do. Thank Absolutely. you so much.